Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Ryland Russell here. Today I wanted to walk you through, give you a closer look at our cable cam setup that we use week in and week out on Sunday mornings. Here we go. All right, so maybe you're like me and you've seen these churches that have these giant jibs and cranes in their worship centers. They're able to get amazing dynamic shots with those. And you've wanted to incorporate something like that into your setup, but your church is not really ready for that in their worship center. Uh, neither were we. But when I came across this cable cam idea, I thought I'll give it a shot, backed it on Kickstarter, Lo and behold, it got delivered and we've been using it for a couple years now, week in and week out. And so while we love our unit and we do use it a lot, I just wanna go ahead and get this out of the way and say, this is not a necessary shot or a tool for any church live stream. This is like icing, no, this isn't even icing on the cake because that's the good part. This is like the cherry on top of the sundae. You don't really need it, but I mean, it's kind of nice to have uh, something else there. So if you're kind of at that point, I'll walk you through how to use the viral light and how we use it every week in our Sunday services. So first of all, this is the unit. It's powered by a single motor. It's got extendable arms. You put it up on the line that it comes with that we mounted on our wall. You can mount it wherever you want to, uh, as long as it's safe and not going above people would be my recommendation. Uh, it's powered by a single LiPo battery that plugs in to the back. It's kind of annoying that it's not a standard RC LiPo end, but it comes with a charger. And then it also comes with a remote that you can control it with, or they have an app that you can use as well, but we use the remote, it works great. And then we set the endpoints and let it do its thing. Now the other piece of the puzzle is what kind of camera are you going to attach to your cable cam? We learned quickly that you can't just put a stabilized camera like a GH5 with sensor stabilization on it and call it good. It's got to have gyro stabilization, such as an Osmo Pocket, but that doesn't have wireless video output. But if you're not doing it live, that works great. Uh, but obviously a gimbal was the answer for us. It needs to be a lightweight gimbal. So this is a Moza Air, the original. And we have a GH4 on here with a 14 millimeter pancake lens. And then this is also feeding out wireless HDMI through our Vaxxus Atom 500 unit. And it's sending it just over to the wall where it's kind of mounted by, and that's going SDI over to our ATEM. So once we had this set up, then you've got smooth, dependable footage that you can now actually manipulate live with the remote for the Moza Air. All right, so now, let me walk you through the actual setup and usage of the viral light. All right, so step one is for us setting up the gimbal. I'm not going to walk you through how to do that because there's so many different gimbals out there and really that is up to you. We like this one because it's lightweight. It balances our GH4 with the 14 millimeter pretty easily. And we have a little mounting point here for our Vaxxas Atom. It literally just has a power button and a joystick on there. But my favorite thing is actually this little remote because we can power on our remote and then now we can control the pan and the tilt of the Moza Air. We have it set to do this really slowly so that way our pans can be really natural looking, go slow, they can just hold down pan while it's zooming across the line. All right, so once we've got our gimbal set up, we'll take it over there, we'll focus it, we'll make sure all of our exposure is correct. And then we have this little extension pole attached to our wire roll light. The only reason that we do that is we want our cable cam to be high enough that no one's going to walk and, and hit their heads uh, on the wire roll, but we want it low enough to actually get some of that parallax effect where you can see the crowd kind of going by. It just makes the shots look a lot more dynamic. So it's a little balancing game of figuring out how low is too low, how high is too high. And we've moved our line up and down on the wall a couple times even. And now I wanna take you over to the actual line and show you how we have this all hooked up. All right guys, so we have our viral now mounted on our cable cam line, our extension pole attached to that a quick release plate, 
attached to that. Then our gimbal with the Atom 500 and our GH4 with the 14 mil in inverted mode and we've hooked up our HDMI to that. Here on the wall we have our receiver for our wireless HDMI and the remote. All right, so we've got the cable cam mounted on the string. I've showed you all that. Now I wanna show you how to program with the Wyrol remote. All right, so this is the Wyrol remote. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna tap the mode button to power it on. Then we're gonna set our endpoints using these left and right endpoint buttons. And I will move the Wyrol and try to show you. We're gonna go over there to the end a little bit further. And we, since we were going left, we clicked the left button. Now, if I can go right, we're gonna go over to the other end. And about there, click the right button. Now, all that we need to do to make it loop, if we have the right firmware, is set our speed and press play. So we'll go back the other way. Not too fast. About like that, maybe. And now you'll see it should stop there, ramp down, ramp back up, and begin the cycle of looping back and forth. All right, so we're up and running, ready to go. This will continue to loop until you tell it to stop or the batteries die, which they last a long, long time. Speaking of batteries, that is one of my major annoyances with the system. Let me tell you about it. We have five different batteries that we have to worry about dying on this. We have these batteries, AAAs. We have the GH4 battery, which lasts about an hour and a half usually. We have the Wyrol battery, which they say will last like eight to 10 hours. We also have the three batteries that go into the gimbal and then lastly, we have the battery, the Sony MPF, that's attached to our Atom 500 wireless HDMI unit. So a lot of things to go wrong is one of the main annoyances with this system. You may be wondering how noisy this unit is. It's basically silent at this speed. It can go in sport mode and go really fast. I would never do that in a setting like this. We've used it outside and it, it might whine a little bit at that speed, but low speeds like this, you're, you're not gonna hear the unit. If you do get one of these, I caution you on your install to make sure that it's not above people. We have ours on this back area right here where there's nobody seated. And that way if the string was to break or something catastrophic like that happened, we don't have a gimbal with a GH4 landing on somebody's head. So do you need this? No, you don't need this. Are we curious about creating the most dynamic and engaging online worship services that we can? Yes, and this has allowed us to kind of get those crane uh, jib shots without having a giant structure flying out over everyone. Uh, it's, I feel like it's way less distracting and it feels more part of our building than one of those units. And the other thing is that nobody has to man this. It just goes back and forth. We set the focus ahead of time. All that they have to do if they want to is utilize the pan or tilt of that little remote that we have for the, the gimbal. And it's just a cool shot. You can be overused, yeah, um, but it's nice to be able to throw in some extra stuff, be creative, and help just capture the full environment, the full worship experience for those that are watching online as we tell the story of the gospel and what God's doing here at our church. So if you found this video helpful, like, maybe subscribe to my channel. I'm doing a lot of these kinds of things. And if you have any questions, things I didn't cover about this unit, drop them in the comments. And if you'd like to maybe chat more and have a video session with me to help answer any tech questions at your church, you can find a link to do that also in the description through my Jimmy profile. And remember guys, we can do a lot of great things, right? Let's do it all for the right reasons. We'll see you in the next one.